Hey, you there. I see you want a competitive Pokemon. Well, guess what? Thanks to the advancements in the latest generation of games, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Why, yes. Back in the day, any Pokemon you used in the story was useless. Beat the game, may as well release that score bunny you've cherished these past dozen hours, or consign it to the box for eternity. But now, the score bunny that went with me through the story can become a competitive powerhouse. Let me show you how. So let's say we choose our score bunny. There are six things we need to have for a competitive Pokemon. In order of priority, the ability, the moves, the stats, the training, the nature, and the item. Six things, and it's ready to battle. Step one, remember to like and subscribe. Wait, no, that isn't it. You do that after the video, right? Okay, step one, the ability. So Skull Bunny has its regular ability Blaze and the hidden ability Libero, which is pretty broken. The thing is about hidden abilities, they're one of the only things you can't give a Pokemon after it exists. So if it doesn't have it, well, looks like you're useless after all, Cinderace. Bye. No, don't look at me like that, Cinderace. We can be friends once the DLC comes out. So next up, I was lucky enough to breed a shiny Scraggy, but it doesn't have the hidden ability either, so it's trash. The joy in my heart of breeding a shiny quickly turned to ashes in your mouth when I checked that screen. Anyway, the ability I want is a hidden ability, but I've made sure Scraggy 2.0 has it. If your Pokemon has the ability you want, we can move on. Or if not, you might need to breed another one, trade for it, steal it from your brother's cart once he's gone to sleep, whatever you need to do to get one. Step two, the moves. Next up are the moves. Some moves can only be learned from previous generations, such as Knock Off. If we wanted this on Scraggy, we'd be toast. But we're building one for online competitive here, which only allows Pokemon bred in Galar, so this isn't an issue. If we wanted him to have Knock Off, we'd need to use an old one we've raised before, so it'd be tough luck for this one, but we don't. Kirby is a great resource to see which moves are transfer exclusive, so check the list before you set your sights on a Pokemon. Beyond that, you can just level your Pokemon up, use TM and TRs, maybe a move tutor, an egg move, all depends on the Pokemon, but you can fix it. Step 3, the stats. Got those two? Great. Basically everything else is fixable in the game beyond one asterisk. First up are the stats, aka how many bests a Pokemon has. Although in some situations you may want something different, such as a no good stat to go first on the trick room. And sadly, if you want a no good stat, you've got to breed until your ass is sore from all that biking. There's no way to lower it artificially after the fact. Otherwise, getting best isn't terribly hard. Just get a good ditto, as I covered in another video, and breed. Although, in this generation, there is an easy alternative to breeding. If you catch a Pokemon from a max raid battle, it'll often have several bests that you want anyway. This could be a super quick way to get your team together, skipping breeding entirely if you want. Over half my battle ready Pokemon are caught this way, and while they aren't perfect, if I decide I want to use them, it's not much effort to fix them up. Anything that isn't at its best can be maxed out by giving this chap a bottle cap for each stat you want to raise. You can buy these for BP at the Battle Tower, earn them from raids or from online battles, or just through leveling up the Battle Tower. This guy's been collecting bottle caps for a few games now. He is so ready for the Pokemon Fallout crossover. Anyway, this means if you find an awesome shiny with rubbish stats, you can still salvage the Pokemon in most cases. When I finally get to bring my treasured Heatran over from Pokemon Home, despite his awful stats, I'll be able to convert him into an all-star easily. And it's super important to have these at max if you need them, because it's the difference between 31 of a stat more or less at level 100. That's the difference between life and death. Step 4, the training. Now that your Pokemon is the best it can be naturally, you need to make a choice in how to train it. Each Pokemon essentially gets 127 stats to distribute as they like for free at level 100, with a max of 63 in any one stat. This makes it even more important than your natural stats for the end result, but a little more flexible. You can check the current training on this screen. If it isn't a perfect circle, you'll first need to reduce those to zero. For example, if you're using a Pokemon you use during the story. There are six types of berry that can reduce a Pokemon's stats on screen now. A bit of a pain to get by shaking various berry trees or as a reward for max raid battles. Once you've used these if necessary and the stats are at a zero, you have a few options. First, you can feed it drugs. By far the quickest way, but about 500 grand a time, which can run out fast. Each Pokemon wants its own distribution, so I can't tell you what to use. Smogon or Picolytics are a great general guide, or if you want to go really in-depth, you can run a damage calculator to see just how much of a stat you'll need to survive a specific attack. Generally, maxing out two stats with four points in another stat is the way to go. Although there are exceptions to this, make sure you know what you're doing. My Scraggy is going for max HP and attack to increase its survivability, while being able to deal a decent amount of damage, with just four points in another defensive stat. The second far cheaper option is Poker Jobs, which you put a Pokemon into a job, you give it the right bracelet, wait a day, and it'll come out with max training in a stat. With just two days of training, 
and a little bit extra, you can max out your Pokemon stats and be ready for battle. And just for the sake of completeness, the final method is a little antiquated, but each Pokemon you kill gives you a little bit of these stats. This is how your Pokemon picks up these stats through the game regularly. If you're going for an odd setup, this might be for the best so you can get exactly what you need. Step 5, the nature. This is an easy fix this generation with a mint purchasable from the Battle Tower for 50 BP, letting you change your nature to whatever you want. It's important as you can reduce the stat you won't need, for most Pokemon it's going to be attack or special attack and buff another stat. It's another change that adds up and you definitely don't want to be reducing your speed by accident. I've put a link to the complete list in the description of what nature gives what so you can decide. Step 6, the item. Lastly, every Pokemon needs a good item. The majority of items you need can be bought in the battle tower or even found throughout the game. You can change these the easiest and switch them up between Pokemon, so you can leave this to last, but it's still very important as a single item can change how you use a Pokemon entirely. A Focus Sash means a Pokemon's guaranteed to survive two hits, or the weakness policy might encourage you to put all your power into defenses and still get a good attack stat, so it's really important to know what item you're going to use ahead of time. And once you've completed these six steps, congrats, your Pokemon is ready to battle. Now you just need to find five Pokemon to synergize with it to make a good team, uh, but that's a topic all of its own. The trainers are still trying to figure out every day. There's no easy answer, but at least doing the above gives whatever Pokemon you choose a fighting chance. Unless you choose Caterpie, uh, Caterpie never wins. But if you evolve it, then it contains untold power. And if you want to find out more, make sure to subscribe as Butterfree is a secret monster and I'll be covering it in a future video. The channel is growing well and I really appreciate you watching. A comment down below or a like would be a big help. And if you're struggling with what Pokemon you want to use and how to build it, feel free to ask below and I'll see if I can help you out. I'd also like to give a big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. Thanks to Danny and Lucas for making these videos a little more possible. So that's it. You now know how to make a complete competitive Pokemon. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you like. Tell your mum if you like. Tell your dog. Tell your gran. Or don't. You know, up to you. But I'd appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Fulfill my bed